Hey, welcome to Portfolio Exploration. I'm Stephen John Phillips. Some of you guys know me already. Um, some of you I don't know. So I looked at the list and I recognized, you know, maybe half of you. So that's cool. Um, this is Portfolio Exploration and feel free to call me Stephen. That's absolutely fine. Um, first, let's just talk a little bit about what the class is and let me give you the actual um, catalog description. Um, students begin the portfolio process by exploring creative and professional possibilities to determine a direction for their work that forms the foundation of their graduate portfolio. Students investigate industry standards and current trends in portfolio presentation. That's really important. Current trends. Current trends are everything. You know, you guys have got to get in touch with popular culture. I just got back from Comic-Con and I was amazed at what's going on as far as portfolio preparation and so on. Um, portfolios are not what they used to be. Sure, some of them are and some of the old school presentations still exist, but so many are online. So we want to make sure that we talk about and cover all of those things. Um, let's see. You guys can look over exactly what we do in here as far as like week overviews. It's all very clear. And again, if you're not sure about stuff, I will certainly help everybody uh, to understand everything as we go along. Um, look, most of you guys are familiar with, at least commercial-wise, portfolios like this. I have a number of portfolios. This is a little miniature portfolio. Um, it's probably got maybe 25 images in it, something like that. Some of these images may be, um, you know, more fine art oriented. Some of them are more commercial oriented. I have different books for different purposes. That's one thing we're going to talk about. There's going to be times, you guys, when one portfolio is not going to cut the mustard. You know, sometimes you're not going to want to show some of the commercial clients some of your more fine artwork and vice versa. Or they're just not interested. You know, if you're trying to get a job with people that just are shooting still life and that is the client base and their subject matter, they're not really interested in seeing your fine art figurative nudes. I mean, maybe they are. Um, sometimes they are. But oftentimes they're not. Here's another book. This has a lot of the commercial um, comic book stuff in it that I do. Um, you know, all of these are a very sort of um, typical commercial approach. This whole um, acetate sleeved leather bound book. Now this was for Simpson Racing, that particular one. Um, these are really nice because you can take this and slide the print out if you want to and swap them up and that's what you want you guys never want to commit to something that is totally permanent because your portfolio it's never really done until you're done I mean you're not gonna be happy with it you're gonna be constantly changing it and you're gonna be constantly changing it with the trends and everything else speaking of trends boy I'll tell you one place that's really, really big news to have your portfolio now is on your iPhone. You are going to find more and more stuff. People are in Flickr. People have Instagram. There's going to be portfolios that are digital. We are no longer locked into one way of presenting portfolios. And that's what this class is all about. Look at this. This is Mark Ryden's wife, Marion Peck. I really like her work and this is a little mini portfolio that she produced and it opens up like this and it has hardbound, this is a commercially produced portfolio, but hardbound prints in the actual portfolio. It's kind of an interesting way of doing it, you know. Um, when you guys do promo pieces you may discover that you may do some things kind of like this, you know. Um, which is an interesting idea. There are no longer those set in stone portfolio rules that there used to be. Um, some of the things that we're going to touch on in here 
as we said, different kinds of portfolios, leather bound, online, boxed, we'll talk about all those. They must be current and have your finger on the popular culture, we said that. Oh, I went to a really good lecture with Gre from Greg Spelenka, who is an amazing illustrator slash photographer, and he had two really wonderful points. He said, in order to make it in this business and understand portfolio presentation and how to get your work out there, you have to be in touch with two things, high tech and high touch. And they're just what they sound like. High tech is the internet, having a website, uh, participating in Instagram. All of those kinds of high tech things are really important in this day and age. And then high touch which I think is a really interesting idea. That whole concept of joining things, going to openings, going to conventions, meeting people, remembering their names, shaking their hands, high touch. I think that's a really important thing to remember about getting your work out there, okay? Um, let's see, sometimes more than one portfolio, we said that. Um, and don't include something in your portfolio that you don't want to do. Boy, I learned that the hard way. Um, don't put something in there you don't want to do anymore. Used to be, I used to do this um, rubber cement, thin down with rubber cement thinner, and this masking process. This was before Photoshop. And, oh man, what it was really time consuming. And I never really got paid enough money to do it because it took forever. And if I put all those things in the portfolio, people are like, that's what I want. I want that. And it'd be like, whoa, wait, I don't really want to do that anymore. And I had one guy say, then take it out of your portfolio. And that's a really good point. Don't put something in there you don't want to do. If you guys are doing something and it's like, wow, this was a nightmare, don't put it in your portfolio if you don't want to get asked to do it, okay? Um, know your client's history, absolutely. Somebody calls you up and says, we're from such and such agency, we're really interested, we'd like to see your work, whatever. Go in there, know what they do. Do some research on them. Google them, look them up, find out who their clients were. Then when you go in there, you can say, hey, I really like this campaign you guys just finished with so-and-so or whatever. It's very important that they think that you are aware of who they are. If you come in there, I really don't know, that's really gonna hurt you, okay? Um, one thing that I thought was a really good point, and I think it's something we really need to think about, and that is this line that I read from a magazine just recently. All artists are paid for their vision, not their skill. So what does that mean? Well, basically, that means you can be as technically perfect as you want to, but it's all about your vision. And that's what this class is about, establishing your personal vision. That's what you're going to get paid for. That's what you're going to get hired for. Because we all know there's a lot of people out there that are technically really, really good, but they just don't have a lot of creativity. So we need to work on both things, and especially the creativity. Again, all artists are paid for their vision, not their skill. Okay? So, okay, hey, this should be a really fun class. I think you guys will really enjoy it. I, I enjoy these kinds of classes a lot. So, okay, so listen, I will see everybody soon and um, we'll get started. I'm raring to go. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.